Well, that ties right in. When it comes to helping poor countries, it's relatively easy to find people who want to be heroes. There seem to be two NGOs for every problem. And while they all mean well, some of them work at the population instead of with it. Let's take a look. Uh, something that I'm suggesting to NGOs is uh, look at w when our companies, companies are merging, when they have a lot in common and can bring down the, 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 the overhead costs. I have never seen NGOs merging and yet if you go out you see a lot of NGOs doing very similar things or doing the exact same thing and they have huge overheads because everybody wants to have its own flag on the roof of that building. Instead of cutting out the pieces where every organization can do what they are able to do best, there is a lot of competition in the field and this is a waste of money. If we would find a coalition that gets its pride and motivation out of the result instead of out of putting the flag on the, on, on, on the house, this is something we have done, we would be able to do more and we would all benefit from the positive results. Of course you could pay a, a top up on the salary. It would be easy and uh, you know a lot of NGOs are doing that, that you come in, you pay two to three times the salary the best people in the government would get. You kind of skim them off. Of course you look very good because you have the best people, but first of all you weaken the government structure to take away those people upon whom change uh, depends. And secondly, once you leave uh, the country, you know, you kind of have maybe destroyed more than you were, than you were building up. My ideal understanding is we have to approach complex problems with a solution team that consists of government employees, that consists of NGOs, that consists of the private sector, that consists of multilateral or international aid, and that we then can say, okay, uh, what technologies do you have at hand? Uh, what is your record of success? What have you done in similar situations? Where did you run into problems? It's also sharing about problems though, that we do not have to repeat the same problems all over again. And learning from successes, learning from best practices, or let's say from good practices. And I think here there is still a lot uh, we can improve. Laura, do you have something you want to do? I do. Yeah. Could you stand up, please? Sure. Can you give me your name, please? My name's Tim. Um, in a country with a economic divide as large as, say, Tanzania, how do you figure out what's fair to pay NGO workers, especially at the Novartis Foundation? Thank you, Tim. Well, <coughs> there, is, uh, there are two ways of looking at it. You can look for what's the competitive wage uh, that works for very professional people with a good education, or you can look for a living wage, which is for people do, do, uh, who do not have a very good uh, qualification. Living wage uh, is determined by looking at what's the basket of goods and services people need to satisfy their basic needs. And uh, the most interesting discussions are what should be in the basket. And I give you an example. The whole idea comes from the uh, Pope Leo XIII, Rerum Novarum, the first social encyclica, where basically in the late ni uh, 19th century, people were exploited by a kind of Manchester capitalism. Today you have a very high unemployment in rural areas and you could press uh, the salaries very much down. Now with Leo 13 savings were not in the basket. Should it be today? Should we pay only what people need to eat and to drink and to see a doctor and to live? Or should we also put in a development component and say people should have holidays, people should have savings, uh, so if they come into a situation where they, in an emergency, they should have, uh, have some money. Plus, can I just uh, interrupt there for just a moment? If my experience is in Haiti, and Haitian schools are very, very inexpensive, mm -hmm. but they're inexpensive because no one can pay. And so aren't we just continuing the cycle of poverty. So if people are only paying, let's say, $25 a year and getting horrible education, mm. then aren't we only allowing them to continue with horrible education? Because then if I'm providing the education, I say, well, but they can't afford better. So mm -hmm. if you only pay very, very low wages, mm -hmm. then we're just continuing their ability to only afford very poor education. On the one hand, Laura. On the other hand, I cannot pay moon prices in an environment where the, all the other prices are very Why low. Why not? 
because that's not only not sustainable, I create an artificial island. Exactly. If, I, if I'm taking, let's say I need to build a, a, a house and uh, I need 15 uh, brick builders yes. or whatever it is, and the, the normal salary would be, let's say, uh, 10,000 Tanzania shilling, and I would say because I'm rich, I can afford 35,000, uh, that wouldn't make sense. That yeah, would I not make, no, 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 let, let, let me finish. That would not make sense. If I want to raise salaries in the long run, I have to change the economic environment. I cannot from mm. outside interfere and create But how islands. can we do that without creating a cycle where we keep it down? So for instance, we, you, you have a school in a particular country, and the country is only going to pay their workers in those schools $3 a day. So you go in and say, I can't sleep at night if I'm only going to pay them $3 a day. So instead you say, I'm going to pay them much more. I'm going to pay them $30 a day. And so you agree to do that, and you can attract decent workers at $30 a day. And you pay more, and then slowly, slowly, those wages go up around the country because other people try and attract good workers. Otherwise, how will you ever do it? Yes, but there's a difference here because what Klaus is talking about is a living wage, which means putting enough money, and Leo the 13th, by the way, mm -hmm. not only enough money to meet basic needs, but enough money so I can have a, my own land and my own house. Right. So that's a living wage. So, so if you give people a living wage, Obviously, they create markets because they're going to buy things, and that helps to raise all the boats. That's different than a minimum wage. No, so, I understand. And that's what he's trying to pay, but he's not going to pay a pay little more. But he's well, not going to pay Swiss <coughs> wages. I, I, I understand. And I disagree with you, Laura, because... Uh, that's well, it's between us. That's nothing new between the two of us. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> but, 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 you know...